Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving graphs of motion. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that the following graph shows the displacement of an object varying with time. So we have displacement in meters against time in seconds, and you'll see that it follows a linear relationship and then a constant horizontal relationship, and then some sort of weird wavy curve. So for part A, the question asks to calculate the velocity of the object at three seconds. Well, you should know that to calculate the velocity from a displacement time graph, we need to get the gradient of the line on the graph. So firstly, we have that the velocity equals the gradient of the line on a displacement time graph, an ST graph, and we're in interested in looking at the line at 3 seconds. So we need to find two coordinates that lie on that line which passes through 3 seconds. So let's look back at the graph. So here's 3 seconds over here. So the easiest two coordinates to choose on here would be the point 0, 0 and also the point 3, 5. So writing down our two coordinates, we have x1, y1 equals 0, 0 and x2, y2 equals 3, 5. So writing down our formula for the gradient of a straight line, we have that v equals the gradient m which is equal to the change in y over the change in x which is is equal to y2 minus y1, so that's 5 minus 0, divided by 3 minus 0, because that's your x2 minus x1. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get 1.67 meters per second. Part B says to calculate the velocity of the object at 8 seconds. So if we look back at the graph, here's 8 seconds over here, and you'll see that at 8 seconds, we've got a straight horizontal line. So that means that the displacement is constant, it's not changing. So that means that the velocity must be 0, because if the velocity is the gradient and the gradient is 0, then velocity must must also be zero. So at eight seconds, we can say that the gradient m equals zero because it's a straight horizontal line, and therefore the velocity must equal zero meters per second. For part C, we have to calculate the velocity of the object at 12 seconds. So if we look at the shape of the graph at 12 seconds, so we've got 12 seconds down here, we should be able to see that we've got a curvy line rather than a straight line. So that's gonna make things a bit more difficult for us. So we're still dealing with the fact that the velocity is equal to the gradient of the line on a displacement time graph. But because the line is not straight and it's a curvy line here, what we could do instead is draw on a tangent to the line first. So we could draw on a tangent to this curvy line at this point here, like this, and that is going to help us choose our two points on that line. So at the 12 seconds, choosing two points in that line, right now we could go for 12 and 9, and then we could go for 16 and 4, which is down this end. So we've got x1, y1 equals 12, 9, and we've got x2, y2 equals 16, 4. So calculating our gradient now, we've got velocity equals the gradient m, which equals the change in y over the change in x, which equals 4 minus 9 divided by 16 minus 12. And this is equal to minus 1.25 meters per second. Notice the negative sign because we've got a negatively sloping gradient. Question 2 says that the following graph represents the motion of a boy on a snowboard in a half-pipe competition. The velocity of the boy can be given by the expression v equals 6t minus 0.5t squared. And you'll notice we've got velocity in meters per second against time in seconds, and we've got a curved shape, no straight lines there. So it says to calculate the distance travelled by the boy. Well, first of all, we need to remember that the distance or displacement is given by the area under a velocity time graph. So we can say that distance equals area under the VT graph, and in this case, we need to integrate since the shape is a curve. So because it's not easy shapes like rectangles or triangles, which we could easily find the area of, we don't have an equation to easily find the area under a curve, but what we can do instead is integrate. So to find the displacement, we have displacement equals the integral of the velocity with respect to time, dt. So notice that we're integrating with respect to the limits 12 and 0. So when t equals 0 and t equals 12. The reason we're doing that, if we look back at the graph, is because our time ranges from 0 seconds to 12 seconds for the motion. Now we can substitute in for v because we've got an expression for v in the question. So this is equal to the integral of 6t minus 0.5t squared with respect to time, dt. And again, we've still got our limits of 12, 0. This is equal to 6t squared divided by 2 minus 0.5t cubed over 3 with the limits of 12 and 0. Now notice what we've done here, we've integrated this with respect to time, so we've added 1 onto the power to become t squared, and then we've divided by that new power of 2. So we've got 6t squared over 2, and for this one we've added 1 onto the power to get t cubed, and then divided by the new power of 3. And notice we're using the square brackets for the integration, so just simplifying that before we expand it, we have 3t squared minus 0.5 over 3t cubed, 
with the limits of 12 and 0. So putting in our limits of 12 and 0 now, we have that this equals 3 times 12 squared minus 0 0.5 divided by 3 times 12 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared minus 0 0.5 divided by 3 times 0 cubed. Notice that that term is times by 0 and so is this one, so that whole term is just going to disappear because the whole thing is equal to 0. So putting this stuff into your calculator here should output the answer of 144 metres. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.